Having uh, Tulis, the exec producer, um, uh, phoned me up and asked me if I would, was interested in doing something about um, British Secret Service officers being complicit in the torture of British citizens abroad. Um, the original idea was for, for me to do something post 9-11 um, related to the Guantanamo internees and, and others around that time uh, in, in the early 2000s. Um, I decided against doing that. I wanted to do something a little more modern, do something that was happening now. The laws changed in 2010 in terms of what British uh, Secret Services can and can't do. So I wanted to incorporate that into the story. Really the first thing for me was to decide who th my uh, MI5 guy would be and I decided it would uh, be a black guy and uh, when I thought of that I, then I thought of David Oyelowo and um, who had been in a piece I'd done before called Blood and Oil for BBC Two. He's a fantastic actor so I'd uh, uh, I'd like to write something for him. So those two thoughts uh, ran together. In fact, I was in New York, I was living in New York when I was writing it, and uh, he, in the, in the meantime, he had asked me to uh, write an, a project for him and, uh, and uh, a Hollywood production company that were developing something set in Botswana. So he had contacted me and said, was I interested? And, and uh, I said, well, uh, yeah, um, I've just literally finished this script. Um, an hour ago, uh, would you be interested in reading it? I didn't want to say I've written it for you. I just said, well, you know, I'd just be interested in what you think. I mean, we kind of, that sort of language, everybody knows what we're talking about, I think. Gave him the script and he came back a couple of days later and said, boy, um, I'd really like to play this one day. This one up from. Uh, I wanted Neil to direct this piece when I suggested him to the producers. Um, I'd seen his other work and what I felt very strongly why he felt he was the right person for it is because he has the capacity to direct the script, i.e. quite a few directors can impose their style on something. And I'd seen his other work, uh, Song of Lunch, Long Road to Finchley in particular, that were two very, very different pieces. And uh, he, was, he, he seemed to work um, in, in great sympathy to what the what the script was doing, so he was he was my number one choice. Okay. Did you speak to MI5 agents? Yeah, we spoke to. Uh, w w I spoke to. Well, we f we did it through the official channels, uh, and uh, they said, yeah, no, they would meet. Um, they'll meet on the steps of the National Gallery, which was such a cliche. And I've been trying to avoid cliches in this script all the way through it. You know, whatever I'd seen about Secret Services. I am not going to copy it and, and I'll just go my own way on it. So, uh, and I said, you know, how will they know who I am and, uh, or how will I know who they are? And they said, well, you know, you'll, you'll, I'll know who you are. So, and that was another cliche and I thought, oh, I'm getting sucked into cliche after cliche here. But I did contact two other people, both uh, who were in MI5 but uh, had, had since left and obviously I'm reluctant to name them but uh, yeah they they help with that yeah I know it's a very boring job I mean it's like doing very very difficult cryptic crossword puzzles you know people just sitting at desks trying to trying to work out the puzzle and also endless looking through boring 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 stuff and I wanted that to be part of it um, and uh, and try and make that interesting at the same time There's an undercurrent of the fact that Edward, David's character, um, never quite belongs to the institution. Um, so that he joined MI5 15 years ago and he works very happily in it and there isn't any, you know, any racism towards him. Um, but there's just a feeling that um, he's comprehensive school educated, he went to Warwick University, a very good university, but it's not Oxbridge. Um, he's, he's black, so he's not quite one of us. And they're, so uh, in the upper echelons of, uh, of, of society, we've still got this quite hidden, subtle racism. And uh, I was wanting to portray that.
And in a way, it's, that's what underlies all the decisions he makes in, in the film. He feels he's not quite believed. He knows he's right. But, but everybody is kind of not, not really there with him. Uh, and when he really needs people to back him, they're, all, they're always feeling, I don't quite trust him. So he's got that conflict within his job. And then he's got the conflict with the uh, terrorist suspect. I'm more interested in actually in the sense of, uh, um, of Britishness and the conflict between the black MI5 officer and the, and the Asian. Both of them are second generation British. It's how one of them gets under the skin, how the Asian gets under the skin of the, of the black guy. And how David's character, uh, Edward, um, feels that this guy has really betrayed everything that the country has given him. You know what? I'm going to make sure you never get that freedom and privilege in my country again. You bring shame on your parents. Don't talk about my parents. Good people who worked hard and Shut gave you opportunities. You have spat in their face. Shut the fuck up! We had quite a few arguments in the, in the pre-production in terms of the script um, uh, between the all, ev all of us, you know. Um, um, part, apart from probably Neil and myself, who's kind of remained quite resolutely stubborn throughout the whole thing, um, sticking together on it. But we've it was it was quite tricky getting the script right. Once I see it filmed, the images that I have in my head have completely gone. Um, uh, so I never have any of that conflict about that's not how I imagined it. You know, it, 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 it's it's what it is, and it's and uh, and whatever I had is just completely disappears. The problem you have if if a scene isn't being done well is that the dynamic of the scene has somehow got lost in you know all the day-to-day -day problems of getting that scene filmed. You know, and the technicalities of it, and the, the, those are the things you notice. Actually, the dynamic of the piece. Your mother was a man. I love the big scene between uh, David O, uh, Yellow O, and and uh, and Asha. Yeah, that was always my always going to be my favourite scene. I think it's about 15, 15 pages long. Um, and I'm always told when I write a long scene, it's too long, it's too long, it's too long. And I've been insisting that it's not too long, and it's uh, and it isn't too long. So <laughs> it's to do with character and not to do with plot. Finally, there's a confrontation between between these two people, which you've set up in the first 50 pages, and now you get the confrontation. And um, I think and hope that that confrontation delivers. And it's, it's, it's the key to, it's key to the piece. And that room has been very, very cleverly designed to be a white box. And uh, that might seem quite a simple thought, actually, but it's a very, very clever thought because it defines the characters very clearly and gives it actually quite a dramatic feel to it. As soon as you go into that room, it, it has a dramatic energy to it. And that's because of this, the, the, the white room. So uh, that was a very, very clever decision. I'm an executive producer on it, and I always try and put that in my contract so that I can have a, a post-production voice, if you, if you like. A lot of writing is about editing. Um, I did dozens of versions of this, of this script, so, and, and most of that is just, is just self-editing. And also, when you're going into pre-production, you do a lot of editing with the directors and the script editor and the producers. So it seems crazy that the writer isn't involved in the editing process because you've done more editing of it than anybody else. I feel I should be involved and I, and I enjoy the process anyway.